Hey, what's up, everybody? So I'm gonna be doing a goblet demo for you guys, and uh, just before we get started, I want to show you some of the tools that are involved. So I'm gonna take the camera over here and show you real quick. So let's just take a quick look at some of the tools we'll be using on this and uh, materials. Um, we've got uh, some 50 mil for the goblet body, the top part up here, and then we've got some 25 mil that we'll use for the foot, uh, some 12 mil that I use for the stem, and then as always, plenty of hunties. Uh, I personally like nice long handles, um, even this is a little short for goblets for me, uh, but it'll do for this. Um, the reason that I like long handles and pulling really long points like this is the larger the goblet body that you're blowing out, the more radiant heat you have to deal with. Something like this size puts out a lot more radiant heat than something like this size. Um, so basically the bigger you go, the hotter it gets, obviously, um, but that can be deceptive. Um, sleeves help. I recommend them for anything bigger than this. Um, we've got the chunk of wood here to keep the glass from rolling off the table. That'll be great. Got uh, a couple of paddles. I've got a tungsten reamer, or sorry, a tungsten pick that uh, I like to keep coated with beeswax. Um, as well as a pair of tweezers that I use for flaring small holes. A um, couple of carbon reamers. Um, got a pair of Jim Moore cup jacks. Um, these are ridiculously handy. I use them all the time. Highly recommend them as a tool. Um, these are diamond jacks. These are for scoring. Uh, these are a pair of mini jacks. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what these go for, but I wouldn't really recommend them. I figure if you're going to spend money on jacks, go with the big jacks. Otherwise, just take a pair of tweezers and make a pair of these yourself. <clears throat> and uh, we've also got a couple of claw grabbers. Um, I don't recommend getting the economy ones if you're going to be working on goblets. Uh, these go out of alignment really easily. Um, even these ones, um, they've gotten a little bit off over the years. It doesn't show very much, but it does make a difference. Uh, one of these days I'm going to you know, spring for some nicer claw grabbers, but for now these will do. Uh, beeswax. Uh, you should be able to get it at like a candle making supply shop if there's one in your area. Um, the, the best place to go to, I would think, is uh, like beekeepers. That's where I got this stuff from. It was, it was about $8 or something for four pounds of it, and it's lasted me years. So definitely if you can get it from them, that's the way to go. Uh, getting it from candle shops, I think... Uh, I think the cheapest price I've seen there is about like 10 bucks for a pound of it. Uh, so definitely a lot cheaper if you can get it from beekeepers. Alright, and then so back over here, we've got the v-necking tool. This comes in a lot of handy. Um, I've also got this guy. It's just a 90 degree with a couple of graphite plates that I built a little jig for. Um, that comes in handy every once in a while, but it's not crucial or anything like that. Um, and yeah, that said, um, you don't really need all of these tools. You can get by with just a paddle, graphite pad, and a reamer, and you know, still make a, a really nice goblet. So, if you don't have the money to, you know, jump for the jacks right now, or you know, any of these other tools, you can still get by. So, just keep that in mind. And uh, you know, if you've got any questions, you can find me on Facebook in Torch Talk. I'm Nadnerb. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm Athic Glass. Uh, A E T H I C. Uh, yeah. That said, let's uh, go ahead and get started. So 
So first things first, I'm just gonna straighten the handle on this one a little bit because it got a little off when I uh, set it down when I pulled this last point. So I'm just gonna get this nice and straight. If your handles are off, if your points are off, then the flares you do will magnify any imbalance. So you want all of your handles, all your points to be nice and straight. That's pretty good. Um, so I'm only gonna need about uh, what is it? About inch and a half, maybe two inches for a decent sized foot. On 25 mil, you can do this with a, you know, just the center fire, the Lynx flame, and still get pretty decently long handles. Um, but for flaring feet, I like the handles extra, extra long. Keep my hands away. I'm tired of getting scorched fingers all the time. And uh, I do like pulling the uh, the points pretty thin. Um, I mean, thick enough to support the weight. Uh, so you can see right now I'm kind of building a Maria into that. Um, but small diameter when I pull it out and nice and long so that, uh, you know, I can spin it fast from far away. So I'm gonna let that heat sink in a little bit. Let gravity take it back and forth, and it should be ready to pull. Burn off the point from this end, and once it's off, pop a hole in the end and prep it for the next one. All right, so now I've got a point. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is attach a punty over here. I'm gonna come back to this shoulder to uh, thicken that up. And like I said, you want you want the punnies and any any handles you you attach or pull or anything like that to be nice and centered. You want everything to be on axis. Alright, so this back shoulder is going to be the, uh, the top part of the foot that attaches to the stem. And so if that's too thin, then it's going to end up with a lot of problems, you know, trying to attach the stem to it. And even when you're flaring it out, if this top part is uh, too thin, then the whole flare ends up wobbling around a lot. And so this is one of the times that the V-neck really comes in handy. I'm just gonna heat up this back shoulder, take it onto the V-neck and crimp it down just real lightly. You don't even need to press. You just let gravity do the trick. doing some really gentle push and pull just to keep the uh, the handle aligned
ultimately you want a pinhole diameter going through there. You really don't need anything more than to just be able to put pressure into the bubble. And just gonna straighten up the handle a little bit now. So now that we have the back thickened up, I'm going to go ahead and blow out this point into a bubble. And this diagonal heating back and forth, heating up the shoulders, Pointing it towards the other end really helps to keep a consistent heat base. You want nice even heat through the entire bubble. And not just through the entire bubble, but through the entire thickness of the glass. So it helps to uh, Occasionally take the glass out of the flame and let that heat sink in through the entire thickness. some weird click beetle on the ground. So the shape of the bubble determines kind of the shape of the shape and style of the foot. So to get a flat foot you would need a different bubble than to have a you know, more of a, a cone-shaped foot. But I'm not going to get into that subject too much more except to say to uh, play around with it and figure out what works for what style you're going for. Now I got the shape of the bubble that I want, but I just want to uh, straighten up the handles a little bit. You don't want to heat up this bubble too much. Just really gentle, light heat. Once the wall thickness starts getting thin, it'll want to collapse if you heat it up too much. So, you can kind of see the shape of the bubble so far. It's a little bit off center, but I'm going to correct that.
So, and as I'm correcting the uh, the shape of the bubble in the center, um, I'm also kind of thinning out the side with the punty on it. I don't want that side to be too thick, otherwise it'll gather back weird. I want it to be the same thickness as the rest of the bubble, or possibly thinner. Just gonna flame cut but not pop open yet this end. I want to pull out this nose really thin. And this is using heat from just the very edge of the flame. So now I've got a very, very thin tip on here. I'm going to heat up this rod, stick it onto that tip, and then just snap off. You can see that opens up a nice even hole. Any unevenness, since it's nice and thin, can be easily corrected squared up I'm actually going to remove a little bit more material from this pop it open again. Now with this little trick, if it's not snapping off and opening up a hole, then you need to pull out the, uh, the bubble thinner. Because if the glass is too thick, then it won't want to break off. Alright, so now that that's open, I'm going to go ahead and close up the end of this tube so that I don't get heat going back into the handle. So you don't want to heat up the hole directly. Since it's so thin there, if you heat it directly, it'll curl back on itself, end up off center, do all kinds of wacky shit. So you heat that shoulder next to it and the heat will transfer out to the hole. You also don't want to put the jacks in or the reamer straight in and then lift. You want to mash the angle of that shoulder and then just slowly let the jacks come out.
I'm also using a lot of centrifugal force. I'm spinning this piece pretty fast. Let it cool for just a little bit and then very gently set it on the graphite pad. No tipping. There you go.